Hello everybody, man, it's Domcast right back to our channel. So, last year, like almost exactly last year, I did a, almost, I did a video called Survivor Series 2019 uh, Match Predictions. And I don't know what this is going on here with, you have like this bar disconnected from the top of the screen. I don't know, CBS Sports be kind of weird. Um, anyway, so... I'm going to do the same format as I did last. I don't know if I'm out of frame. I guess it doesn't really matter. You're not here for me. Um, I'm the same format I did last year because I do not feel like taking notes. Also, I can only do it on this computer. If I can only do it because my uh, laptop's on charge right now. And if I can only do it on this computer, right now I might as well do it this way. So... Um, it says that there will be so, so, following an hour-long kickoff show beginning at 6 p.m. of course at the uh, Eastern so follow the uh, time that you are that may be different um, I am I will Put it like this so I am more level with it excuse me the, the pay-per-view will kick off of kickoff show that's so I imagine since these are all the um okay here we go so the dual brand battle royale happens during the kickoff show yeah yeah because this is the Undertaker farewell thing is most likely gonna happen at the uh in the actual show so kickoff show the match is announced on November 20th that is two days ago no participants have been announced, but it will include members of both Raw and SmackDown. Um, their pick is Lars Sullivan. Well, given how I don't know a direct, um, since I don't know a direct number of participants, I'm going to say... Santino Morella. So, getting on to the actual card, since th these are nowhere in the order that they're going to be on the show, because I don't know the order of the show, I'm just going to go in the order they are, because none of us know, unless CBS just knows. Oh, sorry. Like most matches, also sorry for that background noise. Like most matches on the card, is I don't need to read that. <laughs> um, yeah, Drew McIntyre... The WWE Championship, WWE Champion versus Roman Reigns Universal Champion. So this is the Survivor Series match, one of the traditional matches, champion versus champion. I don't really have a pick for this one. I see whatever happens here. It's going to affect Roman Reigns' storyline, but whatever happens won't necessarily affect Drew McIntyre's storyline. And I say that because Roman Reigns is doing the Tribal Chief character right now. The Tribal Chief gimmick, which was obviously created by the Fiend. Um, if you've seen that pattern happen, the Prince was created in Finn Balor. The Messiah was created in Seth Rollins. And now the Tribal Chief was created in Roman Reigns, all after coming in contact with the Fiend, specifically the Man of the Claw. Yeah, okay. I I can't even read. I have glasses from somewhere. I'm supposed to be wearing them. So, moving on to the the tr the 5v5 traditional Survivor Series match. Keith Lee, AJ Styles, Sheamus, Braun Strowman, and Matt Riddle for, from Raw versus Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, King Corbin, Seth Rollins, and Otis in SmackDown. Now, the, so this is actually a little bit more important from all this right here, as, because, the thing is, Raw's team right here, none of them, all of them, are barely getting along, like, they can't stand the sight of each other, and, uh, no one can agree that AJ Styles is the captain. And I don't know if AJ Styles is going to have his bodyguard out there or not. That might be a deciding factor. 
I don't know. We have two people here. We have Jay Uso, who has a relation to the Roman Reigns gimmick, who has been slightly more, as they put it, unhinged recently. Uh, he's a bit been a bit more vicious. Yes, Seth Rollins, who is no stranger to Survivor Series matches like this. And you have Otis. I think Team Raw might be less distracted. And I think because of that reason alone, they might pull out in the victor victorious. But this is another one of those matches where if Team Raw loses, it doesn't really build on anything. If Jey Uso loses, specifically, it affects almost everything through the Roman Reigns storyline. Moving on to the Women's Survivor Series match. The Women's match. Still the traditional 5v5. Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Lacey Evans, Payne Royce, and Lana from Raw versus Bianca Belair, Ruby Riot, Lacey, Liv Morgan, <laughs> Bailey, and Natalia from SmackDown. Now, you should have seen me. It was funny. Friday night. Um, I have a prediction and a wish. I don't mind if Team SmackDown wins. I actually want SmackDown to win, and I think SmackDown will win. But... There's a thing that I want to happen. First, I want Natalia to be eliminated first elimination of the night. And then I want everybody else from Team Raw to be eliminated over time. And Lana comes out and wins it. Just eliminates everybody else. This is because of the banter and the rhetoric that Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler this year announced that they don't need anyone else on the team. They are themselves raw women's division. And I feel like that would be a good upset for that storyline. Their pick is a Team SmackDown to win for this one. Their pick was Team Raw to win for the Men's Survivor Series team. Their, I, their pick was Roman Reigns to win for the uh, World Champion versus World Champion. I feel like I should say their picks. I feel like anyone who cares about that would want to be. So, now onto the women's world champion versus world champion. I think that's the only women's championship. Asuka, the Raw Women's Championship, and Sasha Banks, the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now, the thing is, Sasha Banks has to watch behind her back for Kamala. That's as far as I know right now, Asuka don't have anybody gunning for her right now with the same vigor that Carmella has for Sasha Banks. So, if nothing else but for that, I think Sasha Banks will be a little distracted during the match. And she may not be able to uh, perform as well. And given the past of how Sasha Banks has lost to Asuka pretty uh, consecutively. I feel like that could also play into this. It'd be a good upset if Sasha Banks wins finally though. You could do a, his little like storyline there. I don't mean to sound impatient. Finally wasn't the right word to use. I don't really care. I'm just a writer so I see things to do with every character. The New Day the Raw Tag Champions versus Stream Profits, the SmackDown. Did I say wrong or raw? I can't speak English. There's a Street Profits, SmackDown tag team. Uh, this is a toss up, in my opinion. This could go either way. They're both good teams. Um, I had to pick one. No, I can't. It's a toss-up. Yeah, it's a toss-up. I'm agreeing with some of their picks here, I think. Um, I really gotta buy the full version of Bandicam. It's just a one-time payment, isn't it? I really got to. I can only record for 10 minutes right now. Yeah, so... Uh, 
This one's a toss-up as well. I think Roman Reigns will win. And I think Team SmackDown might win here. So, yeah. I agree with this pick. I disagree with that pick. I disagree with this pick, even though I think that's what's going to happen. Agree with this pick. And like I said, this is a toss-up. And, sorry. Here's one that I invested in. Bobby Lashley, United States versus the same as Andy Carnival. Now... Sorry about that. If you have seen um, one of the best moments in wrestling in the recent times was Sami Zayn versus Jeff Hardy versus AJ Styles with for the Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn has been proven to be really slippery in all right meanings of the word. And I think Sami Zayn could pull it off if he could employ but there was a difference though that was a triple threat match it was a ladder match a lot more things were permitted this is a normal match from like it's just for it's just for a uh a bragging right so i just read it there that's another good point that they bring up Retribution is still up and around, still circling around. They're still in motion. So, given that, yeah. So, given that, Retribution could get involved. Uh, I give th nothing, but I think they probably will. But um, even with out them, I still think Sami Zayn could pull it off. He tried hard enough, like if he just wanted it bad enough. He got a little flustered uh, last uh, the other night on SmackDown. He did get a little flustered at uh, Daniel Bryan, and I uh, forgot what else it was. Yeah, I forgot what caused it initially. But yeah, then we have The Undertaker, Final Farewell, as you see, as you remember, um, if you've been watching it, the 30 year anniversary of The Undertaker. I've been seeing, you, I've been having like a lot of YouTube ads about it too. So it says, uh, the show was originally advertised as a celebration of 30 years of The Undertaker, so it's already seemed a near guarantee that we'll see him make an appearance during the event that we have since confirmed that the event will feature an appearance by Undertaker for a final farewell seemingly ended his career officially where it all started 30 years ago after several semi-retirements so I don't really have a pick here uh, my pick is that he, my prediction is that he actually retires um, I'm saying this in, in the in Focus for his health, but here's the uh, the main issue with that. It has to be Mark that retires, not Undertaker, because the character of Undertaker can't. Um, that's why the whole thing with the streak ending happened. Because, <sighs> sorry, uh, the Undertaker, the character itself, couldn't just leave uh, so I don't know who's gonna show up Mark or the Undertaker or both or what's gonna happen but hope you've enjoyed this video if you have uh, it should say it down in that corner or that corner whichever way my uh, when it's mirrored whatever way my hand is pointing to me it's on that corner down there but I could be pointing up there I don't know mirroring it is weird so Remember, just, just read it. Bye. Hopefully that was in frame.